racist. It's You're racialist. racialist. I'm a bit racialist there. I'm like Family Guy racialist though. Family Guy racialist, man. That's that's okay. I'm a cunt as well, just like Seth MacFarlane is. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cunt. But the hatred doesn't be fair. What's up, people? Welcome to the Last Hit Point podcast, your weekly dose of entertainment news around the gaming industry. And we'll go in a little bit into films as well, because that just fills the void, doesn't it? Make sure we don't have a little short show. Anyway, Return of the Jamie. Tonight, I'm back um, and as. I'm joined by Janny and by Ben. We're I... around. We're, we're around, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> last, I must say last week was actually just before we really get going. Last week was great. Job well done, guys. Gold star for you both. But not being sarcastic, seriously. It was like, where is this Janny come from? Where did you get this Janny? Uh, Janny stepped up, man. That's what happened. That's why he stepped up. There was a bit of a gap in the market there because Johnny and myself were both missing. But yeah, still, no Johnny at the moment. We're just letting him get on with his uh, his private life and do his thing and make himself a better person. And then when it all falls through and he has to come back to us next week... It's fine. We're here for it. <laughs> we'll catch him. Anyway, let's get on with that weekly dose of shite and stuff that's going on in the world. Um, I think you've got a list of stuff to talk about there, Ben. But one thing you kind of started to talk about last week, but then we didn't really, because you, you know, there was only two of you, was to say that we'd we'd all seen Avengers, the new one, the age, the age of Ultron one. And I'm really impressed with you, Janny. First of all, for going to watch that. I've seen it twice. Yeah, so no. I? yeah Janny. Yeah. <laughs> So, right, I think, obviously, we're not going to go into any spoiler detail, but I'd quite like to know, Janny, what you thought of it. It was really fun and really good, and I really liked it. No, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to remember the first one as well, because I've only seen that once, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> so I'm trying to compare the two, but... um. If you're trying to work out which one was better, I can tell you right now it was the first one. <laughs> <laughs> just say it. <laughs> if you watch anything in like the Marvel Disney film series, every other film is better. Mm. But um, say that, yeah. I, I I think they they did all right. Like with the, uh, the you know, there's a lot of quips. I mean, it starts off with a bad joke, but they keep they keep rolling with it. And I don't know. I kind of like that sort of cheese. Um, and. I, th- I don't know. It's a bit difficult to talk about without giving away any sort of spoilers. Well, it's been but... it's been like two weeks, man. Everyone has like wanted to see this film, has gone to see this film. At least yeah. anyone watching this podcast would have seen that film. Johnny, hopefully. Johnny saw it with us. Yeah, he saw it with you guys. <laughs> you, you mentioned um, you mentioned the running joke. Would that be the bad language joke? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It seems to have pissed off a lot of people. But to be honest, like yeah. where Captain America is my favorite of the of the characters, and he's got the best film. So it kind of wasn't bothered didn't bother me what i don't know the problem seems to be around black widow's merchandise though right that's the big problem can you guys fill me in on this because i have no idea like this has all gone totally over my head i thought when you guys mentioned black widow it was because um i can't remember who it was now captain america and someone else like started uh laughing on like some sexist jokes and i thought maybe he's just still in character because it is like from the 1990s. No, <laughs> you're referring to that. You're referring to that interview where Captain America and Hawkeye, or Chris yeah. Evans and Jeremy Renner, they were asked about. They were asked about Black Widow's character for like having a love interest with Hawkeye, then with Captain America, now with the Hulk, and then Jeremy Renner said like she's a slut. But they were joking, obviously. Mm. But um, but no, the problem seems to be because like there's like, there's no merchandise of her, right? Yeah. I don't. Well, okay. I mean, outside of the amazing hot toys statues that you can get for like two hundred fifty quid, yeah, yeah, which are fantastic. Yeah. But, too many, too many people are going to want that for the wrong reason. Is this? Yeah. Is this something? To, is this something to get upset about? I mean, well, it's not. It's not like Amiibo Gate all over again, is it? It surprises me because a company like Disney would want to capitalize, and they have such a a big focus on their princess range. You know <laughs> that you would think. 
something like this would they would want to like empower young girls into having this sort of figurine there's some pictures of some kids holding up a box of like the character sets and there's no black widow there nothing and i don't know if they want it then the call for it is there they should have probably not just assumed people wouldn't want it and gone without it but you know i think there is a market for it but is that the case it's not like there's been a miscommunication is actually been a fuck up during manufacturing or they're waiting no. for like another. It is build. just it's just an it's like an oversight of not thinking anybody would want it, I guess, and just not doing it. Well, I mean, arguably, Black Widow, like before the Avengers movies came out, I didn't ever really think of her as being an Avenger. I'm pretty sure that she was in there just as like a way for them not to get in trouble. Like, <laughs> to I'm stop like, the I'm, sexist no, no, seriously, seriously, <laughs> this is gonna sound really bad. But, like, I always just thought of Black Widow as an operative of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, through all the cartoons and comics that I read growing up, I never really thought of her as a mainstay member of the Avengers. Like, so this new, like, Avengers lineup is just new for the movies, man. Like, I don't know. Now, is there something... I'm sick, you can't blame me. Uh, (laughs) I I was thinking, I was just thinking about this now. Is it something simple as, they've done it before... It didn't sell. Nobody bought it, so they decided, "Well, fuck that. We're not spending loads of money on on the merchandise for people not to buy them." And then now people are all up in arms because the option's not there. Is, is could that could it be as simply as that? Because I can't imagine they would sit there and go, "No, we're not. We're not going to." No. I I just hope retrospectively they can turn it around. Joss Whedon definitely can't turn it around. He's he's gone now. Yeah, you is. guys. I, I was talking to you guys last night on the on the Facebook wall with uh, Facebook group we got going. Like he's just disappeared off of Twitter now altogether. Um, Slanging first, or yeah, there was a bit of back and forth. I, I don't know why people are hashtagging Gamergate in there because at the end of the day, it's fuck all to do with the the subject matter. Just like feminism, something in a film, and feminism, something this in a game. It's not the same fucking thing. That's not at all. No, so why to everyone who used the the hashtag Gamergate or or anything like that involving this Joss Whedon thing, grow fucking grow up. Seriously. I know. Stop stop being <laughs> salty that somebody tried to bomb you that one time, all right? <laughs> you, you know, I, I'm just getting bored of this now. It's like you they can't win. Like she's kind of a a key character to well, not key character, but she she plays a biggish kind of role in the film. It's not like she's just there for. I'm trying to have to pick my words here carefully, but we're talking about Black um, Widow or that gaming journalist woman now. <laughs> <laughs> Take a pick, but um, you know there is a storyline behind it, and it's not just like boob shots at every five minutes. Um, uh, you guys have seen it twice. Remind me, like, somebody said something about like a boob joke in there. Like, was did did the banner land on her chest at some point? In yeah, that yeah, yeah. When when that's, um... that's one of the things that's caused some uproar. Yeah, but really. Yeah. Hang on. So when well, hang on. So there's a love interest between them and um he he dives over the bar with her and uh, he lands on top of her. Like I mean for fuck's sake, are people really going to get angry about something like that? I said, the thing I said to my wife is 9 times out of 10 when you have these feminism issues, it's from women that can't live the life they want to live. I'm sorry to say it, but it's the truth. Now, when I see a joke like that, Banner going over the thing and landing on her chest. Now, you land on Scarlett Johansson's chest. It's not a joking matter, right? But what the point I'm trying to say here is like it should be more of a piss take about the man than anything because the joke is on him. He's the one getting embarrassed or you know whatever. Like in that, we're not watching a carry on film for fuck's sake. Yeah. This is just it's real life situation and it kind of got him choked up or embarrassed or whatever. And that just that's more about a joke about him. That should take the piss out of him. It's not like objectifying Scarlett Johansson's boobs at all. Like, no, and it's I never even but then these it. are the people who don't... I just don't get it. <laughs> doesn't make any sense to me, man, at all. As somebody who draws about 90% of his world views from anime, I just assume those situations happen all the time and are normal. So why are people no, getting mad? Hey? The only reason these neckbeards didn't agree with it is because he didn't stand up afterwards and go, Haw! and have blood come pouring out of his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so hang on. <laughs> I have anime. to admit, I mean, it, it, it's kind of cool how they've, how they've done it because... In one in one sense, he's this like really meek scientist um, who doesn't seem to doesn't seem to be like very switched on when it comes to women fl- flirting with him. Right. And on the other end, he's, he's the Hulk, who's like just like this fucking animal. Like it, it's just 
I don't know. If it was someone like Captain America who's a bit arrogant or, I don't know. Um... Captain America's not arrogant. Fuck you. Why are you hating on Captain America? Oh, why <laughs> well, you Captain not... America? Oh, come on. on Captain America. <laughs> come on. That... That scene where he's talking and he's when they're having that, and the, the, that is like a couple of scenes beforehand where they're just there talking and he's like, uh, uh, I I know I know when she's flirting or something like that or I got I know firsthand, um, and they carry on talking. He's like, wait, what? Um, yeah, that was him being helpful. That was him genuinely yeah, but, being yeah, nice yeah. to Banner, man, not being cocky or whatever. No, but he's but he's quite he's quite confident, right? Whereas Banner isn't. And so I suppose if it was the other way around, then you could say, well, all right, he's a macho man. She, and then he's like falling on top of her that says, is people reading too much into this shit? Why are we even giving this airtime? Another, yeah, I know. Another thing that's caused some uproar is the fact that she's the one who's caged at that point in the film. There is a point in the film where she is captured. Which is captured, yeah. And that's caused uproar because it's the female who's captured. Um, all right, storytelling. I don't understand anything else about that. Um, I think the reason Joss Whedon's had to really quit Twitter though is because people are assholes. He's. Well, I think we're only we're clutching at straws still because it's happened within the last twenty four hours. But I can see that he did actually go on record in an interview and said, "I've made the film I wanted to make. This is how I wanted it to be on the film, on the screen. This is my film." Okay. We we know that there's alternative endings and stuff coming out in the DVD pressing, and. He's also now saying that the executives at Disney wouldn't let him do what he wanted to do. You're on record, mate. You can't change your tone now. You can't do that. You can't now turn it against Disney, well, which is why the whole thing about Disney firing him has also come in. But he's done with them anyway. He's got to go. Here's, here's, here's my take on this, right? I don't see how anyone can call Joss Whedon sexist, right? When Joss Whedon is the guy who fucking created Buffy. Yes. Right? But he created Buffy like what? Like, how many years ago was that? 15, 20 years ago or something? He started, made, created that show? Well, you, well, well, the movie first, right? 25 years ago then, roughly. Yeah. If about, you go back to that. that, that entire, the entire idea of that show and that universe is like female empowerment. So come the fuck on, people. This is Joss Whedon <laughs> we're talking about. What the but fuck? But every, everything he's done, it doesn't mean he gets a pass for everything. Obviously, he could make mistakes. If he has made a mistake about comments about feminism or whatever then he'll have to eat his words but you know he, he created buffy he's got some strong female characters throughout firefly as well and you know he's he's done it i think you know and he put black widow up there in the avengers film she's a badass and you know that's a joss whedon scene where she's breaking off that chair with the russians yeah that feels like a joss whedon it's like a signature scene but no otherwise what did we think of the film <laughs> um I, I enjoyed it. I don't think it was as good as the first film or Guardians or Cap 2, but I would put it firmly just below those three. So it's probably my fourth favourite in the, in the franchise, I'd say. Really? Yeah. It's, 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 a still, it's still an enjoyable film. It was better the second time I watched it because I went back in with more realistic expectations. Like, I knew what to expect. I wasn't expecting it to, like, blow my mind, which I was the first time. So... Yeah, I'd, I'd say it, it's firmly sort of there, below Avengers 1, Cap 2, and Guardians. So about fourth on my Marvel Wall of Fame. Man, it's like just above Hulk for me. Like Hulk's propping it up. Wait, what? Incredible <laughs> Hulk or Eric Banner Hulk? <laughs> not Eric Banner. No, not, not Bruce Banner. <laughs> okay. Not Eric Banner playing... No, I'm getting confused now. No, not the shit old one. 2008 one. The, yeah, the, the no, one with the Graham Norton. 2008 one. <laughs> Eric Norton. Edward Norton. <laughs> Graham, I'm sticking with Graham Norton. It would be much a better fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> anyway, but, Janny, like, we, I remember last year we were doing this review and we were like, you've got to watch these trailers for all these films. And it would have been like, it would have been like Guardians, Days of Future Past, and like Turtles. And and you just, yeah. yeah, you weren't fussed at all. But, like, you've actually you've seen this film twice now, then. Yeah. Are, are you? Have you been in somebody's knickers since you've seen it twice? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I get the feeling that's what the that was cool. all about. Yeah. Well, the first time you went with Scott, so I hope you didn't get in anybody's knickers. <laughs> Don't make it weird, man. Don't make it weird. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no. Um, well, I saw it twice. Wanted to see it again. Um, and yeah, no, it, it was. I suppose fans of the series aren't going to be disappointed. Um, so even though it may not be in, in say, Ben's top three for, for the sake of argument, it's not, I don't think it's going to be at the bottom either. Um, 
But what well, one thing I loved is how how many people sort of like didn't notice Idris Elba in it. How many people didn't? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is that a trick question? I don't know. No, <laughs> oh, right. Like, at work and stuff. And they were like, I didn't even realise he was in it. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, in it briefly. Not, oh, because he's, like he he's in the two... <laughs> no, he's in the two Thor films. So it's not like... You know, this is an authentic cameo. He is that character in the Thor films. He's kind of key to the to the whole story, really. Because he's the one that... Sorts he's the bloody out. gatekeeper. Yeah. I yeah. But it, They're not yeah, going but, anywhere without him. Yeah, yeah, but in, in, in this in this one, he's the one who's like, who's like up close and personal to Thor's face, telling him to like, like do shit. He's the one seeding the uh, the plot threads for Infinity War, is what you're saying, Jenny. Yeah, he still can't <laughs> tell me where Jenny is though. Who? Where's Jenny? What happened to Jenny? <laughs> Maybe we'll find out because Luther Thor's coming soon. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. Yeah, no, no, they finished filming that. that. Don't, no, don't no, do no. that, man. That don't gets me that. excited. But no, you, would you go back now then and watch the other Marvel Universe films? I'm trying to wait, go, go through them because I finished like the first lot, and then I think I started Phase Two, whatever it was. Um, but I can't remember, so I have to go back. Did you uh, watch Captain think... America too? No, that's the one. Mate. Missing out. That is the one. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. I was at CEX yesterday. I was like, uh, maybe I should. And I was like, no, it's on Netflix. So, um, <laughs> Didn't I? yeah. Go back and watch them. Get them in your system. Yeah, like Ben said, though, especially Captain America 2. Yeah. But yeah. I got really excited and skipped over like what we've been playing slash doing and stuff. And I don't know, Johnny, do you want to... It was probably for the best. <laughs> It's probably for the best. If you Why don't. have you not done anything then, Ben? Or... Well, no, all I've been doing is playing Final Fantasy XIV again, right? And I've been exploring all the new content that they've added since I stopped playing. So they That's added right. they added Gold Saucer from Final Fantasy VII with like a remix of the original soundtrack. and just It's so fucking cool. Uh, they added Chocobo Racing, uh, which is kind of like... It's kind of like the Chocobo Racing from Final Fantasy VII, but they've added sort of Mario Kart-esque bits to it. So there's like boost pads on the track and you can like pick up items and stuff. It's pretty fun. Uh, and they added the card game from Final Fantasy VIII, which is what I've been playing most of all, man. I've just been sessioned in that card game. You are such a nerd. The best thing about that card game, right, is now that it's added, you can play it anywhere in the world and you can literally go up to another player, highlight them and then challenge them to a duel like there and then. So I'm basically playing Yu-Gi-Oh! online now. It's time to duel! <laughs> <laughs> oh no i'm just loving it again man i'm trying to get yeah. myself back into it ready for heaven's ward when that drops we so definitely now, should have I... skipped over the section shouldn't we yeah we should have done because <laughs> i i really struggled with that game of final fantasy 8 i sucked hardcore so although i am looking forward to playing it again on um the mmo so i'll just look forward to sucking even harder <laughs> um oh dear oh dear <laughs> oh dear oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> but uh, Jenny, you've um I'd be quite interested now to get your take because you've been playing the Shovel Knight. Yes, the Shovel I've, Knight. I've, so it's, I've actually played a few things this week and more to come. So yeah, we'll start off with. Uh, oh, actually, I'll talk about Shovel Knight in a minute because. God fucking damn it! Don't you know about segways and, and introducing stuff, Jenny? Your segways <laughs> suck. <laughs> <laughs> I played Final Fantasy and you go on to Shovel Knight. <laughs> uh, no, we said we were. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Shovel Knight. Okay. Um, ben, cut it there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh my god. This game is... I have waited so long to actually play this and it does not disappoint. Um, it is like nostalgia heaven heaven to anybody who's played any games in the past or any major franchises in the past 20, 25 years. Um, and it's unashamedly as well. I don't know if you, you picked up on that. Um, like even to the point where there are some platforms taken straight out of uh, Super Mario World on the SNES. Oh, it knows uh, what it's doing, definitely. Yeah, the, and they're because the, yeah, but um, all that aside, I've never had so much fun with a shovel. <laughs> to be really honest, um, yeah, you had more fun before you used the shovel, though, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> no, my life. Is I'm so sorry. <laughs> Carry oh on. It's not my fault. She said she would talk. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, oh, God. 
You were so, so fucking composed last week between the two of you. I'm going to fuck off more often. Because <laughs> <laughs> we don't have you to save us, Jamie. <laughs> so, um, no, honestly, it, it looks beautiful considering the the, the um, 8-bit graphics it is. It does look really nice. Um, there's lots of little secrets. Um, there's so much. There, there is actually quite a lot to do. Um I couldn't, I I just love playing it and I've sort of recommended it to as many people as I can. So um, it is probably my favorite game so far this year um, or game that's been released this year. I know it's not a 2015 game, but it it is. But I can't go in your awards at the end of the year, Johnny. It can't. Damn it. It can't. GTA 5. (laughs) (laughs) Again, no. Um, (laughs) Did you find the Kratos level or the Kratos fight yet? Okay, let me tell you where I'm at. I've finished World 2. I think World 2. So probably not. No. I, it doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> means nothing to me. But no, like in the in the game, you'll get the, the rogues just running around the map. Similar to oh, Mario yeah, yeah. map. And you can then you go into a combat with them. He'll be running around like that on the PS4 version. Uh, but if you play the Xbox One version, there's a whole separate area that opens up to play the, against the Battletoads. And you take them all on individually in a different style like so there's a lot more going on with that this is what i was saying before we recorded if i go back i played it on the wii u if i go back now i'm going to want to play it on the xbox one because rather than just a random one-off fight with kratos i'd get a whole new section of the game devoted to it so it's uh but um yeah no fair play to the developers there because they really well they already play homage to so much within the game itself but then to nail battletoads from what i've seen of it just perfect Mm. definitely What I love is the relics as well. Like they, they, um, I did get stuck where I ran out of uh, gems, so I couldn't buy anything off uh, Chester. And um, oh my god, I've just clocked about his name. That's pretty sad <laughs> because he raids chests. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Danny! <laughs> oh my god! Anyway, so um, yeah, the relics. So I couldn't, I couldn't buy it off him in the dungeon. And then I tried doing another level. Well, it might have been one of the bonus levels actually, and I couldn't. I couldn't do it until I had that that uh, relic or power up. Right. So, so um, yeah, and it, it does encourage you to like mix it up a bit as well. So, which is something that can be quite because the game's gone by. I always notice you get a decent weapon, or you find a new item and you use it for one dungeon and then you n- never really have to use it again in, in in some poorly designed games whereas this one um even though i suppose shovel knight doesn't explicitly tell you to use them but you but you can use them quite to your own advantage or you want to use them because they can be quite fun so um yeah i'm really enjoying it i'm not doing it justice either as usual <laughs> just stop talking i think i might yeah no, did yeah. you have anything else you wanted to... Because I, I rudely interrupted some idea that you might want to talk about Final Fantasy, didn't I? You wanted to <laughs> rant about that. Okay, okay. I'm not going to rant as much as I have been because I think I was wrong. However, I have to mention about... Um, we're, going, we're going through this uh, well-worn path of HD remakes and we've got Final Fantasy Type-0, which Ben forgot to mention that although it's a graphical improvement over a PSP game, it's still the laziest, the laziest remake I've come across. The, there's one bit really early on where the textures, uh, it doesn't even look like they've touched it. Like, even though it is a HD remix, it doesn't actually look like they've done anything to this. I can't remember what it is. I think it's something that's sinking or uh, a ship gets blown up or something. And it just looks awful. And the way that, like, when the characters are talking to each other, their mouths are just like the PSP. Um, on majority, well, not the majority, on any character that isn't seen as a main character, but still has a talking part. Um, oh yeah, run... because only only the main cast have had new character models made for them. Everyone else is still on upres PSP character models. It's the Which same look... problem that uh, Final Fantasy X and X two have with their HD remakes. Exactly the same. Only the main cast have new character models. I actually never picked up on that on 10 and 10 too. 
It's but just I think how it's... Square Enix do it, I think. <laughs> but I think on those games, it probably get, it gets away with it because it's mainly the main cast who are talking. True. Um, but yeah, it's pretty fucking lazy. Um, and, and also things like running around, it's really, it's really janky. If that makes sense, it's quite. I don't know. You're forever running, and the camera's awful, and just. Oh. Imagine and if you were I... playing this on the PSP and you didn't have the other analog stick to move the camera. Oh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but, but, you got used to it on a PSP. We're now in the game. You know, this is a. Bearing in mind, this isn't even on the Vita. This is a fucking full PS4 game. That they're charging forty quid, fifty quid for. I mean, arguably, arguably, it's just a stealth parcel to deliver the Final Fantasy fifteen demo, right? Yeah. <laughs> but which, uh, which is a good segue onto the next thing I was going to talk about is de- is the demo. Um, I'm not convinced. If that's anything like the final product, I'm not convinced that. Um, well, for starters, they've chosen a really boring part of the game when your car breaks down and you have to get it repaired and you have this massive wasteland. And you yeah, but the car's the main character now. <laughs> <laughs> I think they did that. <laughs> they've, they've chosen to show this bit specifically and I haven't played this yet. I've got it sat here ready to go. I fell asleep before the podcast so I didn't get a chance to play it. Derp. I'm sick. I already said that. Um, but they've chosen this because it's a big, wide open expanse that you can go and explore and it's not yep. like the fucking corridor that Final Fantasy thirteen was. Granted, but give me a chocobo or something to run on, because it's like Final Fantasy X when you get to the um, uh, the the plains or whatever Calm it lands. is, the calm lands. That's it. And running across there was so cumbersome and boring. Right, it is. It, it's like they've gone the opposite way. They've gone from a, a really narrow, linear corridor to this massive expansion world where there's not a great deal apart from the fact that it's new, there's nothing else really to encourage you to go and explore because it's so cumbersome. Whereas if you could go across quite quickly, not quickly, but like easily. Yeah. No, quickly is a... You know what I mean? Quicker than running. Then it would be fun. It's a bit like when we saw the Zelda um, video. And we th- we said, oh, look, that could actually be quite boring because it's quite wide open and vast. Yeah. Um, and it's about keeping it interesting. And I didn't really find it that interesting. Although I did get a bit excited when I saw Chocobos. Do you mean that cancelled um, Zelda project? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> is that when I'm about to buy a Wii U? No. Anyway. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the battle system's really weird. I'm getting fed up of... Oh, I'm not going to give away any spoilers. But you have to fight a pretty big enemy. And it becomes blindly obvious quite quickly that all four of you aren't strong enough, or five of you, I can't remember how many there is, aren't strong enough, and then you have to run away. The only thing is, this thing chases after you, catches up with you, and just keeps killing you. So you have to, like... When I restarted, I had to, like, slowly make my way over to where the exit was, was to even have any attempt to try and, like, elude it, um, unless you try and stun it, stun it which wasn't really that helpful um and i and you kept and i kept going into stasis as well you're trying to chain an attack and um you have to be really careful because as soon as you go into stasis you are absolutely useless uh so i didn't really enjoy it it felt more of a chore than it did actually playing um which is a I shame they... because all of the gameplay trailers that they've shown are like really fast paced and fluid and if the game doesn't actually play like that, I can see a lot of people being really disappointed by it. Well, you could just take a lot of damage. This is the problem. Like, you, I don't like we're having to rely on the computer to heal me or to tr- to try and distract an enemy whilst I'm trying to do something else. Um, I found myself. The the another problem is I've, the camera. Oh my god, they've got to sort out the camera. It's far too close. Now, if you're going to have a battle system where you have where you're able to roam and when you're able to roam in a battle you can easily run into another uh, pull another character uh, another enemy you've got to have a wider view you cannot have it so close behind the main protagonist because you just don't know what's around you so you can't sort of like 
give yourself a bit more space when you're trying to, I don't know, trying to heal or whatever, or mm. just you know, or trying to avoid an attack. It's you just end up. I mean, the amount of times it kept happening to me, I just pull a load of enemies because I'm trying to get away from being mobbed, but trying to just trying to you know, and then also trying to engage and one of the enemies rather than having them all at me, and then end up backing into something else even worse. Um, so I'm just hoping it's an early build and that, you know, this is just to say, look how graphically good it is. And, um, I mean, the characters themselves are, are seem pretty cool. They've got a good range between like, I suppose there is one guy in there who looks like he's about 17 and probably plays the, uh, typical female role in a final fantasy game. Is that the guy like with the blonde hair? Yeah. I hear his voice <laughs> acting's dreadful as well. It is pretty awful, but because he's the youngest in the group, you could probably, I, I don't know, it kind of works, but it's kind of shit. Um, you'll, you'll see what I mean when you play it, but I don't know. I'm, I want to love it. Maybe it's because of Final Fantasy 13 that I'm being so critical, but they do need to sort out the battle because it can get, there's a lot of options and it doesn't really... <sighs> Well, I don't know, watch the space. But the status, get, going to stasis is is really easy and it's not ideal. Well, like I said, I, I haven't played it yet, but I've got the demo sat ready to go. So I will have played it by next week. And next week I'll tell you why you're wrong, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> is that how it's going to be? Yeah. <clears throat> I have a problem with the game itself, though. I, I think if they... Um, uh, break away for a little bit of news on this, actually. There's been reports that they were going to be looking at launch window around E3 time. Right, and they were going to present it at E3 because they've got the big presentation there, haven't they? At E3 this year, they're doing their own conference, right? Yeah. I'm not that out of the loop, am I? I'm not that rusty. No, no, no. They definitely they've... got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was the initial thought. That was going to be what they did, and they were going to look at that as a launch window. But now we're talking more like Gamescom time, which is what, like August. So it's been, I think, they what they're looking at just that final polish. Now they're really close to finishing it, apparently. Well, that's... We could have it this year, like the, before Christmas. Well, that, that's that's a good thing, right? If they're delaying it now to work on feedback that they're getting from this demo, then that's a good thing, right? They could be ironing out these problems that Janet's complaining about now. They could be. It could be mm. resolved. But were you guys looking at like a June release window? That's Hell no, man. I thought this game was coming I... next year. <laughs> yeah, like well, that, that's what I'm saying. E3 is June, and then Gamescom is normally around about August. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's the one in Germany, right? So that's yep. normally about August. So... Yeah, and then you get the Tokyo Game Show in September. Yep, that's sort of like the the layout. But but yeah, they, they would have it would have gone in with their conference. Maybe they would have just been like, by the way, it's out. Like Oprah comes out, you get a copy, you get a copy, <laughs> you all get a copy, and nobody actually wants to play it. But the game, I I'll be honest with you, I, I've not ordered it. I'm I'm not sure on it at the moment. Amazon recently did that offer where it was like two for eighty pounds on pre-orders. Yep, and so I like I went onto the deal. And I opened up a new window for all the games I potentially wanted, and it was one of them. Um, and then I would, I would just, event, I would break them down. I'd go, well, I definitely want these, and I definitely want these. So I do an order. I'd get two of them, and then I do another one. And it came down to the last order, and I thought I can't really afford to do more than this. But do I want Quantum Break or Final Fantasy 15? And I'm really sorry, but at the moment I've gone Quantum Break. I might get a lot of hate for that, but I kind of want to give that a go. Well, no, well, no not really, because. You really liked Alan Wake, right? I never played it. You never played it? What is fucking wrong with you? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're part of the problem, right? Well, Quantum Break is from the guys that made Alan Wake. Alan Wake was fucking fantastic. Yeah. So I'm yeah. expecting Quantum Break to at least be decent. Whereas you haven't been a fan of the Final Fantasy series. like You haven't enjoyed any of their games really up to this point, have you? So I can see completely why you would go for Quantum Break over 15. But, I mean, it's a game that kind of now fits into my criteria. What was quite evident with what I ordered is that they're all third person and the majority of them are sandbox as well. Like, obviously, that's what I go for. People know that. But So Final Fantasy XV fits into that more than any of the others ever could have. So maybe I'm still going to probably have time to pick it up. I mean, look at today, for example. I just All it takes is one thing from Janny and I order a fucking car game. <laughs> oh, GTA, damn it. Um, the, the only thing I'm going to say about Final Fantasy is, yeah, it looks good, but don't judge it on the graphics like we all did on 13. Um, because 
even though it may be better, I still don't. I, th- I have this funny feeling it's still lacking quite majorly. Um, I don't know. I hope to be proven wrong. But or just forget yeah, about it. I, forget about fifteen altogether and just buy bravely second because at least you know you're going to get a good game that way. Maybe you'll jump into Final Fantasy fourteen. I don't. The last thing I'm going to say on it is I would have. I much prefer to control the whole team rather than one pallet person. Mm. You know. Um, that's that's all I can really say on that, really. And that's okay. all I have to say about that. That's it. Ben, are you ill to the point where you can't do flash news? You need to. No, I've I pulled I've pulled the uh, tissue out of my nose, and it's right. not running right now. So I think we can uh, hit up the flash news, you man. Think you I on, think man. I can do it. Do you want some flash news? Let's 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 get some flash news going. All right. First on my list, we have the spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie, titled Ukulele, was recently put up on Kickstarter. The impressive bit, they reached their goal of £175,000 in just 40 minutes. As of recording this podcast, funding is sat at just under £1.4 million. If you want to back them yourselves, £10 will net you a copy of the a digital copy of the game on PC, and £15 will net you a digital copy of the game on console. Hmm. I, I haven't played any of the Banjo-Kazooie games, so... What? Really? Yeah. This is, um, I was a PlayStation rare. kid, so... Rare have apparently got a new game at E3 as well. Oh, that's the big rumor. So although we know about this ukulele project, that could be interesting. But, but this isn't rare, is it? This is from people who were involved with... Yeah, some of the developers on board who... Yeah. The developer behind the the Donkey Kong Country games and stuff. And Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. but yeah. No, 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 that's fine. Uh, I just didn't want there to be any confusion. Yeah, no, no, of course I don't mean to... The, uh... Yeah, because we know that Rare are just going to release some sort of Kinect game, which is going to be utterly disappointing. No, they're, they're not going to do a Kinect game. No. <laughs> yeah, really? no, sorry, not to tie it all together like that, but at the same time, almost tie yeah. it together like that. Okay. Yeah. But no, I mean, this is this is quite exciting. I didn't realise those those Kickstarter things. Um, so I may end up, um, sorry, okay. crowdfunding, I should say. So I think I'll jump in at 15 quid. 15 quid for a digital PS4 copy, yeah, definitely. Yeah, as long as it doesn't end up like nuts and bolts. <laughs> no. cool uh second on my list sony announced this afternoon via tweet that the ps4 has sold 2 million units in the uk it took 45 weeks to break the 1 million mark but only 35 more to double it these numbers are keeping it ahead of the curve that ps2 was on so at the moment it's selling better than the playstation 2 in the same time frame that's just more numbers nothing really we can talk about there to be honest well- there's one thing I was going to say. I was saying to Jamie actually before. Was like, doesn't two million UK just sound like not a lot of consoles? Well, it's just a very sold... small market compared to the rest of the world, man. Yeah, but this is this is what we were talking about. Like, it just sounds like when you think they've sold what twenty two million. Yep, around that. worldwide. But then, like states in America, in America are bigger than our country. Yeah. You know? So you got to think about it on that scale. Yeah, it's just hard to get your head around. That's what, all my head around. And I suppose Japan just sells like everything <laughs> well japan's japan's really small as well i'd be surprised yeah, but if it... they were like that far ahead of us in terms of ps4 it's got to be a similar number yeah. yeah you think yeah definitely I reckon I similar. More... I Main, mainland down, europe yeah. are really big on ps4 and uh, apparently america this generation are really big on ps4 that's where the bulk of the numbers will be yeah. oh yeah of course because japan's are... yeah i forgot they had the staggered release date as well didn't they um hmm interesting Okay, moving on. Yeah, uh, next on my list we have, on May 12th, Sony's game streaming service PlayStation Now is hitting the PlayStation 3, along with a few more titles being added to the service. Uh, and I put as a side note, I guess they weren't lying back in 2006 when they had a, they said they had a 10-year plan for the PlayStation 3. Does anyone mm-hmm. really care about this? All the games available on PlayStation Now currently are PlayStation 3 games. If you've owned a PlayStation 3 for long enough, you've played all these games anyway. Yeah. Seems like a bit of a messy product. Can't be bothered with it. Just doesn't really I don't even know. Yeah, don't mind. All right. Uh, on next, we have Marilyn Manson has decided to release his new album, The Pale Emperor, on old PlayStation 1 discs. I put as a side note, it makes sense because they are also something nobody buys anymore. <laughs> 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 so you could play that on your PS3 if you really wanted to. Yep. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, apparently, there's a 
there's some sort of thing that goes down when you play it where like you put the disc in and it's black like a PlayStation 1 disc and by the time you've listened to the album and take it out the discs turned white but yeah oh. it's, it's a Marilyn Manson album so I, th- I thought you were going to say you were going to play it and then you come out looking like Richmond for my tea crowd <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then last last but most important on the list most important most important important. dragon ball is back 18 years after the conclusion to the anime we're getting a sequel series named dragon ball super overseen by series creator akira toriyama and produced by fuji tv the new show is due to begin airing in july 2015 so the voice cast we know and love i cannot wait man so this is going to be as... Oh shit! You guys won't be sarcastic. No, 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 no! I am no. fucking. I'm gonna put my mic on. It's like if we right know anything is they can still pull it out the bag. Battle of Gods is an awesome film. So still do all, it. all I've heard so far confirmed is that it's taking place after the Margin Boot arc. Yeah. I don't think they've mentioned anything about it taking place after the movies, but I would assume that's a safe bet. Uh, I hope it's. Just, I hope that's the case anyway, because I would love to see some of the characters they introduced in the movies being in the series as well. So yeah, I'm I'm so ready for more Dragon Ball, man. Always. There's always room if it's done right. No more room for GT, but there's a uh, there's always room for good Dragon Ball. Shit, GT's been canon since it was released. Non-canon since it was released, man. Fuck, fuck. That's what I'm saying. There's no room for that. Yeah, we don't care about that. But no, like I said, I I really enjoyed the Battle of Gods film. So there's always room. Hell yeah, man. And that is it. That's all I have on the Flash news, man. That is it. There would have been more, but I fell asleep <laughs> before the podcast. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was a shopping mule all day. Sorry, I couldn't write anything for you. But no. <laughs> that's how it goes. Married life and all that. Right. If that's everything, does anybody else? What about Johnny? Johnny, you got anything? No? He's eerily quiet. Oh, Johnny, God. why do you never talk? Oh, no, man. Johnny, eat the fucking pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Right, well, thank you for listening. Um, thank you for putting up with me trying to bullshit my way through this. Um, I feel really rusty. How do we do this again? It's not GSC Bye. anymore. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just I messing, forgot, y'all. I forgot this just messing. Time, man, doing this. Just messing. But no, right, anyway, it's um, if you want to email us, please do. LHPOxford at gmail.com. Um, get the Oxford in there. No, they won't. Some people do. Do they? Normally, they're people Ben know. <laughs> I thought the only people who actually get in contact was like Chiquitos or something. That's going to be my next thing. Or if you are some sort of me- Mexican cuisine on Twitter, we are last underscore HP. Do you want to tell us about that, Jenny? <laughs> <laughs> Jenny started to. flirting with a Mexican like restaurant. I, don't know. I didn't even mean to. I didn't even tag them in the post. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we didn't make it better over... with the picture of Ricky. Um, I nearly said Ricky Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> Is Ricky Gervais like the British equivalent? <laughs> Seriously, guys, we are, are, actually that's kind of sad that our the, the most amount of interaction we've had is with Chiquito's restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that says it all. And that wasn't even anything to do with gaming either. Oh dearie me. I don't know. Anyway, also Facebook is the is the forward slash thing. Last HP. We're on there as well. It's normally just Janny writing stuff though. It's fucking mm. glorious. Check it out. It's just yeah. <laughs> it gets on there and it gets on the Twitter and but and, and, and we're also down there. We're in the we're individually tagged. If you're on if you're on the uh, on the pod and you'll see it right down there. And if you're on the YouTube, you've been putting it back on YouTube. I have. Oh wait, hang on. We every single we had week. interaction from Asshole Dream, didn't we? Oops. Who? Asshole Dream. <laughs> Oh no, that was weeks back. <laughs> <laughs> that was when like I tagged it as no anal fisting. This like <laughs> Twitter page called Asshole Dreams reply like favorited it. <laughs> <laughs> oh Twitter, you're so funny. Oh Twitter, you know mm. nothing's compromised. But no, that's it. I I don't know how to sign off. I normally want to just say fuck off. Is that how we do it? Right, yeah, that, was best, that was the best. That's the best one we ever had. Yeah, go go fuck yourself. Yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.